Oh, hey, what's going on? I didn't even see you guys there. Uh, yeah, just got done with the sauna. About to do a cold tub and, wait, you want to see a backyard gym tour? Oh, oh yeah. Let me just get this cold plunge in. I'll come right back. I'll show you my gear. Ooh. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this episode of the Backyard Edition of the Philly Caden Household where we're going to take you through what is my yard with a gym and some recovery tools that we use back here, kind of a spa slash workout facility. Um, we've been putting this thing together for the past year and have had some really, really uh, fortunate things happen to allow us to kind of put this all together from from the beginning of shelter in place when uh, things went into lockdown last year in 2020 um, we built a lot of this uh, prior to COVID ever hitting and the truth was that we never really used the backyard and I was always bitter about it I was like we have this beautiful space but we're working so hard and we're always out I mean I have a great gym that had to get closed down and so as soon as the shelter in place hit it became a mad dash to get as much of this space really dialed in so that we could experience our fitness and take our kids back here and have a really great year of uh, staying healthy and staying motivated uh, despite the crazy conditions that have been going on in the world. So I'm excited to show you what we have. I'm excited to show you all the new gear that I just recently got. We went through some major upgrades over the past year. Let's go ahead and check out all the gear all the recovery tools, give you a tour of the backyard, let you see it how it's spatially arranged. Let's do it. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW. Okay, hey, this is the half rack set up in the backyard. So this rack that I just got from Aleco is galvanized steel. So one of the issues I ran into with some of my old equipment that I had, I had a rig from a different company, I had a rack from a different company that was out here, it was getting rusty. Um, we have great weather in California, but sometimes it does rain, there's definitely moisture out here. This is not going to get rusty. This thing is meant to withstand all the elements and it's going to be the perfect addition for back here, as well as the rig that I'll show you in a minute. This thing has a pull-up bar, which my last squat rack did not have, which I really enjoy having because sometimes I like to really get good sun exposure and it's much nicer over on this side of the patio to film for you all uh, so you can see what's going on. We've got these safety spotter arms, which will come in handy for heavy squats. I was just doing some rack pulls off of here the other day, which made it really easy to adjust the height. I went pretty heavy. I love doing rack pulls. Now I have a rack to do that. They also sent me out, um, Aleco sent me this awesome Easy Bar, which I haven't had at my home up until recently. I love Easy Bar just for obviously doing arm day. <laughs> so I've got a variety of bars. I feel pr really lucky to have as many barbells and as many training options as I have here. They're not all necessary. I will point out the ones along the way that I think really would make for a great setup. I'm starting with the, this, this squat rack because I think that this squat rack itself encompasses so much of what you need to have a good at home training facility. I'm gonna show you this pull up rig I have over here, but it's definitely not essential if you're just trying to build a place for you to stay in shape while you're at home. This, I can do pull ups, I can do pulls out of the rack, squats. I'll show you a bench in a second, but the bench is key. The easy bar, it's a nice addition, but I don't believe it's necessary. I would say that definitely making, you know, something in your budget for a barbell, uh, a good barbell, invest in a better barbell than you might want to uh, because it's going to last you a really long time. These Aleco training bars, they are great for Olympic lifting. They are great for power lifting. They can pretty much do everything. And these, these are about two and a half or three foot by three foot, you know, rubber uh, 30 millimeter squares that I got straight from Aleco as well. They are protecting my patio. Before I was using a very thin 8 millimeter rubber roll which was fine. Um, it definitely gave me good grip for my feet rather than slipping on the uh, the patio 
um, that has been sealed with a, you know, a little sealant that gets slick when it's wet out. But these things have been great so far. Um, so we've got an easy bar, we got a, a regular Olympic lifting bar, and then of course this thing right here is the Aleco deadlift or trap bar, and it's an open face bar on one side. Gives you some options for deadlifting. Uh, again, I would say that this is probably not a, uh, a must have. This is definitely a bonus perk of having, you know, a variety of different barbells at your home. Hopefully the, the gym that you go to um, when they open back up or if you're back training in a facility has a trap, trap bar like this. Um, I really like the position of this. It gives you a lot of variety in terms of going down into a squat depth or hinging so you can really emphasize the deadlift whether you wanted to make it more quad dominant or hip dominant. So I got the trap bar, got the uh, Olympic lifting bar. I've got the easy bar, this thing galvanized steel. It's gonna stay all together in the weather. And then of course, I will show you some of the rest of the pieces that I've got in the backyard now. I've got a variety of different benches here at my, uh, at my house and, and I'll show you the different uh, benches and GHD type things that I have over there. I think getting an incline bench is an absolute, uh, you know, necessity or it's definitely something to prioritize with your home setup. So some good plates, an Olympic lifting bar, a good rack, and an incline bench. An incline bench that has a lot of different options for, this has all the way up to 75 degrees, 60 degrees, 45, 30, 15, and then flat. Um, I think just having that variety is gonna give you lots of, lots of options. You can use the bench for doing hip thrust. You can also use the bench, of course, for, for chest presses, dumbbell presses. You can raise this up maybe it's a 45 or 30, you can go prone on it, you can do rows with a set of dumbbells or kettlebells, which I'll show you soon. But I love having an incline bench. I chose to get an in incline bench over a flat bench so that I have that variety of different pressing angles and pulling angles. It is gonna be more expensive, but I think you're gonna get the extra mileage out of having that option of going up and down. And one more thing that I love to do on incline benches um, that you can't really get on a flat bench is doing a variety of different leg raises. So something like that. Um, you can get super creative with it. Okay, let's check out the rest of it. Okay, just flip the camera around. We've got the rack over there, the bench. Um, and just for people that are wondering, hey, where do you store some of these things like your plates and your bench so that they don't get, you know, weathered, right? The rack is gonna stay, um, safe out in the conditions, out in the rain, out in the sun, but I wouldn't leave your bench out in the sun, I wouldn't leave your plates out in the rain, your barbell for sure. So I have this uh, small little um, plate rack over here that I keep close to this half rack so that I can get the plates to and from when I'm squatting, when I'm doing some Olympic lifting right here really easily. Um, this obviously hangs, uh, this is, sits right underneath the overhang, so it does protect it a bit. I'm thinking about getting a tarp to put over it when it's really wet, but I also hang up a bunch of other things around here too. So I've got a full plate set. Again, you don't need to go for the colored plates. Those are a bit, bit of an upcharge. Um, they are really, really nice and you know, if you, if you love training and you love having a very well-equipped gym, then certainly go for some colored plates, but you can get some training, training discs or training plates that are a bit more inexpensive. I'll show you some of those that I have also um, from my previous gear set that I've kept for a while, and they work just as well, but I definitely love some colored plates. And then some other things that I keep over here, you can see I've got this mat, that's from the CrossFit Games in 2013 or excuse me, 2014, I've got this bigger mat. That's my 2016 games mat. That thing's about, let's say four by eight. So it covers a pretty big span. That's what I used to lift on before I got these uh, three by three 30 millimeter squares. Um, I'll still pull that out and use it for a variety of different things. One day when somebody comes and trains with me or when my wife's training with me and we wanna have two stations, we can pull that down really quickly. This is a must have for the home gym. These are parallettes. Okay, parallettes, you see me using these all the time on Instagram. Um, they have a variety of different applications. Um, just go scroll through some of the Marcus Philly Instagram posts on minimalist training with just parallettes, but they're inexpensive and you get a great mileage out of them. You should definitely get a pair of those. 
Um, I've got a few different jump ropes. The jump rope that I use mainly is this one right here. Um, this is a weighted scout rope from RPM Fitness. It's my favorite jump rope. It's if I was going to be in competition mode and trying to go fast, I would use their sessions rope, which is a lot faster, but a little bit of a weighted rope for me is just good training, good training tool. And since I'm not trying to compete in fitness anymore, this is really awesome for me. I love using it. Um, I've got a bunch of other things for, uh, you know, hanging up on the rig. So I've got these ab slings, right? Which you can get on Amazon. Um, another really great training tool. If your shoulders are feeling a little burnt out and you want to do some hanging work up on the pull-up bar right here, ab slings. Remember you just throw these things into your arm like that <laughs> while you're hanging. Um, good core work from that. I've got a chain to do weighted pull-ups, um, which I think is um, not absolutely necessary. I mean, many people just have a hard enough time with regular pull-ups, but if you're really good at body weight gymnastics, maybe get one of those. Okay, and then some other nice features that I've got. I've got a variety of these different handles. Uh, these hooks, right, you grab on like this, they go over the pull-up bar, and things like that, or something like this cannonball right here, or these little miniature balls right here. They're all just different gripping apparatus that you can put up on the pull-up bar, change your grip. I like to mix my grip. That's something that we use in functional bodybuilding a lot is alternating your grip, alternating your foot position, alternating your hand position. These are ways to get a variety of different stimulus out of the same exercise. So you're gonna do pull-ups twice a week for the rest of your life, which I would totally encourage. Try changing up your grip. Try changing up the thing, the implement that you're grabbing hold of. Um, you can get a great new stimulus out of it. So I've got those. Let's see, other things that are important to have um, that are must-haves. You know, you've got to have some chalk handy. Got a little bit bag of chalk. I got a little bit of tape. I've got a little uh, miniature timer, which is not an absolute necessity, but if you if you want to get one, it's great. This one's from Tiny Timer. Um, and they sent me that. That was really sweet of them. But you can always use your phone. And then, let's see. Got my weight belt for when things get real heavy. I've got the <laughs> waterproof grill cover, which I use to cover the bench. So the bench comes, sits right underneath here, underneath the roof. I put that over it because that definitely can get weathered pretty quickly. Don't want that to happen. As far as these barbells go, the nice ones, they all live inside. I don't leave those outside. Um, those will... Uh, actually, I don't even know what will happen to them and I don't want to find out. They're just so precious to me that I want to keep them really nice. So the barbells live inside in the living room. Uh, moving along, I've got a weight vest. This one uh, came from the 2016 CrossFit Games from Murph. I completed that workout. They let me keep that. Thank you very much. Um, I almost quit that workout, but I didn't. So keeping that as my souvenir, my reminder never to quit. Um, it's made by 511 Tactical and you know, there's a variety of good companies out there that are making weight vests, but um, this one has been with me for a few years and, you know, I don't use it that often in my training, but when I do, uh, it adds a nice little variety to some body weight, you know, workouts, whether it be step ups, box jumps, pull ups, walking lunges, air squats. I don't do a lot of running because we can't, I'm not really running out in the street here. I'll show you my cardio equipment that I have, but a weight vest is kind of a nice touch. And then finally, you gotta have this is a must have, okay? <laughs> this is a swing. <laughs> we hang this thing up on the rig, my kid's swinging it. Um, maybe I can show you that another time, but no, that's not a training implement. That is just, if you wanna like, it's basically like a, a combination between a hammock and a swing set. They love it. I love it when I can relax out in the sun, which isn't that often, but um, I try to make it happen. I got a few bands, uh, a few other small things, but that kind of covers the main bulk of the equipment that I keep out here really close to this squat station. So let's move on over to the rig. I'll show you what the rig looks like. I'll show you a couple more benches. Let's go. Okay, this is about 15, 20 feet away from where I just was. And this little stretch of patio concrete we put in, um, we put it in to basically make room for this hot tub. And this was when we, early on when we moved in, we wanted to have a hot tub and then we just poured this concrete slab. I never thought that I could put a pull-up rig here. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, 
I didn't have a pull-up rack on my squat rack or a pull-up bar on my squat rack and I was really just missing that aspect of training. I think having something to do pull-ups on at home is so essential. You could get a door jam pull-up bar, you could get a squat rack with a pull-up bar, and if you really want to go whole hog and you want to get you want to get a full rack, then this is what I would recommend. This is a two squat station pull-up rig. It is roughly four feet by six feet. Um, I stole a bit of rig from my gym that was closed for seven months, eight months, nine months. I brought it here, bolted it down. It got a little rusty, it got a little worn. I got this one from Aleko. Again, galvanized steel. This thing is gonna hold up to the elements and it's got some sick features to it. So I'm gonna show you what those features are now. We've got these J-hooks, right? So this is a squat station. There's another set of J-hooks that are not up, but this is also a squat station here. So I've got one, two, three squat stations. Should I ever need to do that much squatting or that many different barbells? Have some friends with me. I've got this kind of bare steel pull-up bar um, as well as this one. And this is great for doing bar muscle-ups, toes to bar. This is the one I use mainly for any kipping action. This thing is bolted down and it's super sturdy. It doesn't sway too much. This pull-up bar is actually an adjustable pull-up bar. So you can pop these pins out and this thing very easily just moves up and down. So my wife loves that. She's a little bit, my wife's a little bit of a shorter athlete. And so she does appreciate having um, a shorter pull-up bar. We can also pull that thing down really low and the kids can swing on it. They're learning to love to do pull-ups. Okay, this is the other thing that I really love. This is actually a hip thrust bench. So this little bench actually comes off. If I were to like pull this thing out to the side, it would, I can take it right off. And slide it back on. So that bench will adjust up and down. If I have a barbell, I can do hip thrust. If I have some dumbbells, I want to do some glute bridge chest presses. If I want to do some seated seated work, this can serve basically as just a bench. Um, the other thing I'm excited for is we're going to get one of these at the gym eventually. I move right up to here. It's a standing desk. That thing is super sweet. I can't wait to give that get that <clears throat> into the mix of training. Um, other things that are happening over here is this is a vertical barbell plate uh, barbell storage but I had it put right there. And then this is what they call the joystick from Aleko. It's basically a landmine. And so now I've got a landmine I can bust in and out anytime. Down here at the bottom, there's a U-shaped ring, which I'll attach the battle rope to that I have, which I just started to play with recently. So it attaches here, take it out that way back onto the patio, do some battle roping. Um, and then perhaps the, my, most, the, my favorite thing about this rig is uh, these handles right here. So if you see, these handles are on a swivel, okay? So I can take these handles that are rotating, okay? They go in and out, rotate whatever way I want, and I can make them wide grip, or I can make them narrow grip, okay? And pull-ups on this feel awesome on my shoulders. I get that wide grip, narrow grip, neutral grip, a lot of variety out of those two pull-up stations. Plus, I already have two straight bars, so I didn't need another straight bar here. We put that in. That thing is absolutely awesome. <laughs> and of course, this doesn't live here all the time, so we'll pop that out. It's a perfect place to do pull-ups. Use that little step to get up there. Um, and then, you can't see it now, I'll show you in a second, but we've got two, these two uprights are 12 feet tall, which means, at the very top, if I hang rings, I can do ring muscle-ups. So I've got some rings that hang right here. And then this pull-up bar, if I pop it out, I've got a little shackle up there that I can loop a rope, a climbing rope. It's gonna be a 12-foot you know, climbing rope. If I go from my knees or from seated, I do legless climbs. I can get some good rope climb work in there. And then lastly, right up on this inner piece of this, I'll move this pull-up bar out. I have a wall ball target. I used to have the wall ball target right up here on the outside facing this way. And because of the way the sun exposure is here in California, relative to my house, 
I, will, I will, was always staring into the sun doing wall balls, which never worked for me. So I had it moved once we got the new rig and I put it on this side. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but I can do wall balls here without this pull-up bar in the way. And uh, I won't be staring into the sun anymore. So this is the pull-up rig. These two rubber mats are brand new. I put them under here. This makes it really nice for me to do burpees or any type of you know plyometric uh, push-up things. Um, if I'm squatting here, if I'm doing jerks in this rack. Um, so this is a nice little addition. But again, things that would I would say are like kind of essential at the home gym, you wanna get something with a pull-up bar. If you're gonna get a rig like this, then, and you have the space to do it, go tall, go 12 feet. It's not that much extra money to get the taller rig and you're gonna get a set of rings out of it and you can hang a rope from it, which is absolutely so much fun to have access to when you're at your home and you don't have access to a gym. That's something that people always say that they miss. Like I miss climbing rope, I miss swinging from rings. Well, we've got all that here and we're able to do all of those types of training things in the backyard, which I'm super grateful for. All right, just so you can see one last time, here are the rings hanging from the top there's the wall ball target and right up there at the very top in the middle of that cross beam is the rope shackle and that'll come down plenty of room to climb rope and do muscle ups omw on my way to you good at what i do i'm omw omw